PowerTech 71006 safety locking switch. I'm going to go over a couple different options on mounting this and how to wire it. Coming up. Hi, I'm Roger. Welcome to the shop. What I'm going to cover here today is a PowerTech 71006. It's called a safety locking switch. Looks like this here. And the uh, main point of this is if you uh, perhaps you have some small children and you have a tool or something that you don't want them messing with, this yellow clip right here pulls out. And once that's out, you can do this all you want. It's not going to turn the uh, machine on or piece of equipment on. Then when you want to use it, just simply put this back in there and you're back to having a switch. So we're going to go over a couple different ways to mount this. Uh, you can download a uh, template, I shouldn't say a template, but a diagram from the PowerTech website that will give you the dimensions to cut out for this switch on the back. Okay, so there's quite a few different ways you can mount this. Uh, as I mentioned, you can cut out an opening here for this. Once you have your hole cut out, you can place the switch into the hole and mark your holes here, drill some holes, and either thread the metal or use uh, little nuts and bolts. So that part's pretty simple. Uh, another way you can mount it, and this is kind of a cheating way to do it, um, definitely you want to have this into a box. Don't just put it on the front of a piece of wood and have the wires hanging out. That's, that's not very kosher. You want to have it safe so that nobody can stick their paws back there and get shocked or even worse, electrocuted. Uh, so, common box is uh, the four inch square box like this here. They're you know, about a dollar thirty at the home store or whatever. Maybe you can find one for ninety nine cents. Who knows? Pick up a what they call a raised cover. This particular one is made for a single device. The opening here is inch and five eighths. Uh, it's normally made for a single receptacle. However, this will fit. And this, like so, of course, I'll go into some more details on how to make this more permanent when I get the camera close up. But there's another mounting option. Once you get your switch uh, mounted and wired, put it on your box. There you go, you got a good installation. Okay, so we've got our cover here, we've got the switch. One of the first things you want to do is take out the uh, screws that come with it, because you won't be using those, so they'll just be in the way. Then place your switch into the opening. As you can see here, it fits nice and snug. Get it squared up. So you've got a good looking installation there. Self a pencil. Mark the holes. What I'm going to be using is some 632 pan head machine screws. I'll show you here in a minute. I'm going to drill and thread these openings. I my pencil is long enough to reach than I think it was. And pop your switch back out of there. And it's a snug fit. You, it would almost stay in there by itself, but don't rely on that. So we have four holes here. And something I like to use is a uh, it's a drill and tap combination. This particular set's made by Greenlee. These they're not cheap, but they work very, very well. Then you can fumble with your drill while you try to get the bit on it. A little piece of wood underneath it.
Okay, once you've got your holes drilled there, you can mount your switch. And before I mount this, I want to point out on the back of this switch here, you have these uh, tabs, which we will be using these crimp-on connectors here. Oh, there we go. you would be using these crimp-on connectors, and they'll plug onto this. Uh, you also don't want to exceed the horsepower rating of the switch. And it does not appear to be on the uh, cover there. Ah, here we go. So, 2 horsepower, 125, 250 volts. And that's 20 amps. So do not exceed 20 amps. And you shouldn't be on a 120 volt circuit. Especially for a switch this small. To notice on the back, as you look at it, if you look very closely, they're numbered 1, 2, then there's a blank where it's 3, then on the, this side over here it's 4 or 5, and a blank where it says 6. 1 and 3 are one side of the switch. 4 and 5 are the other side of the switch. So if you would try to wire it this way, it's not going to work. You need to come in on 1 and 4 and go out on 3 and 5. And I'll demonstrate that here in a little bit when we get to wiring this. But I'm going to get this here mounted in my cover. I'm using a little 632 by 3 quarter panhead machine screws. Set it on my box, make it a little easier. You could also use nuts and bolts if you don't have a drill and tap set up. So, once you have your switch mounted like so, it'll look like this on the back. So next we need to wire this guy up. Um, since this is just a demonstration, I'm using some scraps of cord here. Of course your green needs to attach to your box and attach together as the one going out. Let's assume here that this one here is the line side. That's the end you plug in. I'm going to strip your ends back a little bit. Your wire's a good twist. And we're going to be using these connectors, like so. Uh, Stacon, Panduit, there's a lot of different brands. Uh, us electricians, we all call these Stacons. It's kind of a generic name. You want to put that on your wire. Make sure you have the right size uh, crimp connector for the size wire you're using. This happens to be a 16 gauge wire on this scrap cord. And the blues are made for 14 to 16. If you're using number 10 or number 12, you want to use the yellows, which would look like this here. And they have a much larger barrel and they will accommodate it better. If you're using something smaller, for maybe you've got a really, really small thing you're operating and the wire is smaller than 18 gauge, then you want to go down to the red. Okay, to crimp this on, there's a couple different ways you can do it. If you have one of these types of crimpers, ratcheting crimper, you'll notice that uh, they're color-coded right there with the red, blue, and yellow. This happens to be some Titans. They're not real high-end, but they work very well. And for there, you would just place the connector in where it shows the blue dot, give it a squeeze, you have a perfect crimp. Okay, your other option, and I'll do this on the other one, is to use some of the more traditional style crimpers where you have the little nose in it. Down there and give it a good crimp. Don't just try taking a pair of pliers and squeezing because that is not going to last. Okay, with this being the line side, we want to go to terminals 1 and 4. So we'll make 1 the hot side. You just plug that right on there. Put the neutral on the other side. And we'll have to do the same thing for the load side.
You'll also want to make sure you do not strip your wires too long. The tip of the copper should just barely come out the end of the barrel towards the spade and the insulation should be inside that barrel. You don't want wire hanging out on either end. This would be the load and for this you'll want to match your colors. So you want your white which is your neutral on the same side as the neutral that you put on the line side there which would be terminal number six and on terminal number three we'll use the other hot side and of course you want to connect your grounds together since this is a demonstration I'm not going to do that here because obviously the ends of these cords don't go anywhere I'm just doing this as a demonstration I'm going to be using this on a little project I'm building so I thought I'd do a demonstration on it so now you have this all rigged up like this and you would mount that in your box of course with the wires coming out an appropriate connector but just wanted to kind of give you an idea on how to wire this up how to hook it up which terminals go where uh, one of the ways you can mount this without doing a whole lot of fuss otherwise as I mentioned earlier you can cut this out right here so then when you're ready to go got this mounted there's your on off want to keep the youngins out of there or unauthorized people take this out put it somewhere this will not operate the switch ready to operate it again stick this back in boom you're ready to go so that's all there is to it really and when you get done you'll have a nice looking switch like this you could even paint the cover ahead of time before you mounted on there or uh, as I said earlier you could actually cut out the opening you could use a flat cover and not use a raised cover but this is easy quick simple and again this is a little temporary thing just to demonstrate how to wire this so that's the PowerTech 71006 safety locking switch how to wire it one installation method if you got something out of this appreciate getting a thumbs up always helps the channel and of course we're always looking for subscribers and next to that subscribe button's a little bell you click that bell, you'll be notified when I post another video. I'm Roger in the shop. PowerTech Safety Locking Switch. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.